Hello. This is Lou Vanetti reporting live from KJRX. I don't know if anyone out there can hear me or not. Only hours remain before Earth's magnetic field declines to zero. And as most of you know by now, once that occurs, solar radiation will destroy the atmosphere. And God be with us all. Flights across the globe have been grounded for 24 hours as the comet Copernicus passes Earth. This will be the largest celestial object in recorded history to pass this close and is expected to create a global electromagnetic disturbance. When the comet was first discovered six months ago, Good morning. Hey, Miss Penny. Hey, Zen. Sorry, that's Cynthia's order in the fridge over. Okay. So I'm taking the science club on a field trip to watch the comet. I heard. That's very brave of you. <laughs> You're coming along too, right, Zoe? Yep. Dad is letting me off work early so I can come. Right, Dad? I suppose. Next up, to discuss what unforeseen dangers we may be facing, we are joined now via satellite by our own Dr. James Mayfield. Hey, hey, look what's on TV. Now, Doctor, can you explain why you believe it's possible that the comet could hit us when almost everyone else has predicted it will simply pass us by? Wait a minute, Lou. All I said was that you can't rule it out. Look, having just passed the sun, gases in the comet's icy core will be heating up like a hot spring that could affect the comet's speed and trajectory in ways that we just can't predict. 
Fascinating. Now, I understand the Storm Hazards Department has sent you to northern Alaska to observe the comet swing by. That's right. We'll be uh, just inside the Arctic Circle where the comet is expected to pass over at its orbital fulcrum, meaning the closest that will be to Earth. Uh, it's a very exciting opportunity for us to uh, observe geomagnetic anomalies in the Earth's magnetic field. Thank you, Doctor. That was local hero astrophysicist Dr. James Mayfield via satellite from Alaska. Getting a signal? Yep, logging into the satellite. <sighs> My last two Cubans. Been saving them for a special occasion. That's uh, against the law, you know. Yeah, well, relax, Peter, we're in Alaska. Well, the US trade embargo says that no American citizen can smoke a Cuban cigar anywhere in the world. Okay, we're in. Showtime. You can get 10 years. That's a good point. I better smoke both of them. Hey, Pam, satellite link is up. You should be getting our EM readings. Copy, James. Reading it now. Across the globe, eyes look skyward tonight. Millions of teachers and students in every nation get the chance to glimpse something that great astronomers of the past could only have dreamed of. Okay, everyone, I'd like to show you something. Just as our planet has a magnetic field, so does the comet. Gee, this comet's gonna pass in Pluto by the time this guy finishes. <laughs> Zoe, could you come up here, please? Hold this up for me, please. Okay, so we're going to imagine that this compass is Earth. As the comet passes, the magnetic fields interact, creating intense bursts of electromagnetic waves, which can interfere with modern technology. So, ladies, no sulking if your boyfriend doesn't return your text messages tonight. Yo, it's a freaking comet, not your mother undress. Hey, move it. Leave him alone. Hey! You're both going to be reimbursing the school for the cost of a new telescope. What? This guy started it, Miss Penny. No, it didn't. He was picking on him. It's Mrs. Mayfield now, and I don't particularly care who started it. You're both paying for a new telescope. I'll be contacting your parents about the exact cost. Bad enough you married my father. Now I can't even get fair treatment in class. Go wait by the washroom, Shane. The data is looking a bit fragmented. Electromagnetic interference is coming on strong. Yeah, our friend Copernicus seems unusually magnetic. Where's my lighter? Viewers are probably experiencing increased interference as Copernicus reaches what's expected to be its closest proximity to Earth. Comet is at orbital fulcrum. Should be passing over your area in just a few minutes. We've just gotten word. This is extraordinary. We'll continue to broadcast around the An electromagnetic storm from the comet is affecting our electricity. had a surge in the electron acceleration. The field's EM levels are skyrocketing. Radiation belts being pushed into the atmosphere. Pam, are you reading this? Yes, I'm measuring a radiation spike in the belt safe zone. 
4.5 million angstroms and rising. Wait, that's odd. I'm getting a second set of separate readings from the comet. Magnify sector LP4. I see something in the tail. Copernicus is fragmenting. We've got a piece of the comet breaking away. No, we, we, we can't see anything. Can you read the fragment specs? Projectile diameter is 300 meters. Velocity at 30 kilometers a second. And what's the trajectory? Descending at 45 degrees. It's gonna hit Earth. Use the belt electron trajectory to triangulate a point of impact. Working on it. Latitude 51 and longitude 179. James, that's only 100 miles from where you are. James! Did you hear what I said? Get out of there! Notify IEW to issue an alert. Repeat, notify IEW to issue an alert. Pam, do you copy? Where's their projected point of impact? I don't know. I lost her. Maybe I can amplify the signal. of massive damage and casualties have been coming in from Alaska, northern Canada, and eastern Russia. Communication is still down throughout these affected areas. As the death toll rises, we are getting estimates that as many as a quarter million people may have perished in this history-making disaster. One piece of good news to report, local resident Dr. James Mayfield has miraculously survived the blast despite being within a few hundred miles of ground zero when the comet struck. He is expected to be arriving home today. Mom. Thanks. 
Who wants coffee? I would love one. Well, uh, I'm sure you guys have lots of science stuff to talk about. So. Whoa, whoa, Shane, wait, wait. Come on, I just got home. Sit down with us. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of tired. I feel like laying down. He got into a fight and broke a telescope. I'm making him and the other kid pay for it. I'm sorry. No, 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 don't be sorry. I don't envy either one of you. I wouldn't want a stepmother for a teacher or a stepson for a student. Uh, well, now that you're home, you're gonna have to play bad cop and do all the disciplining. Otherwise, he's never gonna let me get close. Deal. We're still investigating that possibility. But right now, it doesn't appear that there's anything that the public needs to worry about. You've got to be joking. What? A 300-meter projectile hits the planet at 30 kilometers per second, and he's saying there's nothing to worry about? Maybe he just doesn't want to scare the public. Unlike some people I know. My science advisors have reported that the immediate crisis is over. So the important thing for the American people to know is that they are safe and they can go on about their daily lives. This is unbelievable. <sighs> James, I know you went through a terrible ordeal in Alaska, but you're home now, okay? So let someone else do the worrying for a change. Enjoy being with your family. You're right, as usual. Mm -hmm. The United States of America stands ready to offer all of the available assistance necessary. What is that terrible sound? Shane, you okay? Yeah. Just what I said. All the data we collected in Alaska and uploaded to the government has been classified, and neither you nor I have the clearance to access it. In fact, we shouldn't even be talking about this right now. The whole department's under a gag order. That tremor we just had was preceded by some kind of EM disturbance, which could mean that there's been serious damage to the magnetic field. Yeah, I recorded an electromagnetic spike earlier, but I didn't know what caused it. We need the comet data. Who classified it? The administration. Great. Not even a comet hits immune to political spin. Well, maybe there really was some damage to the field and they don't want to disclose it to the public. We need to find out. You have reached the office of the president's science advisor. Due to extenuating circumstances, this office will not be taking phone calls until further notice.
What are you doing up on the roof? Tracking the sun. And why would you be tracking the sun? It's not where it's supposed to be. Why would you say that? Yesterday, the sun set behind Eagle Peak. What do you mean? It's never set behind the peak. Exactly. Hello? Hey, it's a Shane. Yeah, who's this? Hi, it's Zoe. Um, I was just calling to tell Miss Penny the pastries are ready. Pastries? Yeah, we're donating them for the school's disaster fund drive, so she can pick them up whenever she wants. Okay, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll let her know. Okay. Bye. Bye. Hi. Um, Zoe just called the pastries for the fund drive are ready. You want me to go pick them up for you? That would be great, Shane. Thank you. Can I help you? Oh. Hi. How's it going? Good. You're here to pick up the stuff for your mom, right? She's not my mom. Okay. Stepmom. Hey, you have my sympathy. I'd die if my dad married one of my teachers. Hello? Hey. My God. What is it? The sun's 10 degrees off from where it should be this time of year. How could that be? Okay, and in like an hour? You still meeting Kevin at the park today? Uh, yeah. See you there. Cool. Hey, James. Hey, Lou. Haven't had a chance to talk to you since the interview. So, what's this great story that you've got for me? You remember how we used to come out here and watch all those sunsets? <sighs> Maybe that's what you came out here for. I was here for the babes and the booze. Do you remember how this sundial was always right on the money? Yeah, I remember. Hey, Shane. Hey, Zoe. What am I, a job planner? So, Shane, buddy, I got a little problem because of you. You see this car? My dad's making me sell it to pay for the stupid telescope you broke. We broke. Now, whatever the point is, I think we can settle this little problem. How's that? Drag race. You and me. You win, I'll pay the 4000 we owe for the telescope. I win. You pay. Come on, what do you think? Not afraid of getting your ass whooped, are you? You wouldn't win. <laughs> Ouch! You hear that? Greaser boy thinks he can beat me. Let's do it. Dr. Mayfield says his suspicion was first aroused when he noticed the sun setting behind Eagle Peak. Now, I can tell you from my own experiences of growing up here, the sun has never set behind Eagle Peak before. And then there's our trusty sundial here, which has never been wrong.
until today. reception what about you nothing what is that it's like an aurora here i thought those things only happened up north in places like alaska something bad's happening Exactly is the problem with an axis tilt changing 10 degrees? I mean, so what if the sun sets 10 minutes later? A shifted axis tilt means the Earth's axis of rotation is out of alignment with its magnetic poles. This could have serious consequences for the Earth's magnetic field, the seismic activity, the electromagnetic interference with communications that we've been experiencing. This could all be just the beginning. The beginning of what? a catastrophic pole reversal. You mean like what happened a million years ago when the North and South Poles changed places? That's right. Back to you. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Right already. James, buddy, we are famous. What are you talking about? <laughs> you don't know. Know what? Your story caught fire. My report got picked up by all the big networks. Really? Yeah. Look, there is some weird crap going on all over this country the government does not want to talk about, but your theory makes more sense than these alien invasion stories, so the networks picked it up. Good. Maybe it'll force the administration to come clean. Yeah, look, any more uh, earth-shattering developments? I'm your man, right? See you, Lou. I'm your man, right? See you, Lou. I'm your man. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, Mr. President. How are you, sir? Who leaked the axis tilts to the press? Uh, Dr. James Mayfield, sir. Mayfield? That's your son, isn't it, General? Yes, sir. Dr. Mayfield is my son. Then what the heck's he doing leaking classified information? I'm sorry, sir. I'm not aware of his activities. We haven't spoken in nearly five years. You don't say. Well, maybe now would be a good time for a family reunion. Because if you can't put a muzzle on him, we will. What exactly was his involvement with this? Our storm hazard research department contracted Dr. Mayfield to monitor the comet's effect on the radiation belts. So wasn't this guy under the same gag order as everyone else? Yes, sir, and his research was classified. Uh, but to be honest, sir, the data he updated could not have revealed an access tilt as it was collected prior to the comet hit. Don't argue semantics with me, doctor. 
A gag order is a gag order. I don't need 400 phone calls coming into the White House every hour about a poll reversal. That's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Right, Dr. Elman? Well, it's a preposterous thought, Mr. President. The consensus is that the Earth's axis will slowly fall back into place as it rotates. Glad to hear. However, this sort of doomsday hysteria is exactly why we need to keep the public in the dark right now. Your son. Sir? Is he smart? Yes, sir. How smart is he? Too smart for his own good, sir. That's what it sounds like. You better bring him in. Yes, sir. James? What's really happening? All the telltale signs. This is unprecedented. What is? The pole reversal. Shane didn't come home last night. Are you sure? Yeah, his car isn't here, his bed hasn't been slept in, and I can't reach him on his cell. You said he was going to the park last night. Oh, my God, I just heard on the radio the park was ripped apart by a major earthquake last night. Let's go. you to come with us to the airbase, sir. Base? Or what? I don't know, sir. But we have an executive order to take you to the base. By force, if necessary. Go. Go. I'll find Shane. I'll call you as soon as I know what's going on. This way. Hey, Dad. James. Should have known you were behind this. Long time no see. Five years, not so long. I guess it just seemed long to me. Did you get my birthday card? I did. Thank you. Very considerate. How's your son? Must be getting awfully big by now. Yes, he is. He probably wouldn't even recognize him. Probably not. Have a seat, James. So, you've caused quite a stir in Washington. How's that, sir? Violating a government gag order, for one thing. I didn't violate any gag order. That axis shift was my own research. Don't play games with me, James. You're either on the team or you're not. Oh, here we go. You know full well the intent of a government gag order. Everything you worked on was classified. The public has the right to that information. It's not your call, James. You're a science rat. You don't make policy. And scaring the American public is against this country's greater good. You think you're a good soldier. You're just a lapdog for political bosses. You'd probably shoot me yourself if they told you it would serve the greater good. What am I doing here? Obviously, it's not because you missed me. I had the President of the United States tell me today that my son was a national security risk. So what? He wants to burn me at the stake? No. Lucky for you, he wants to hear you out. Oh, you mean he wants to cover his ass? Increased electronic interference continues to be reported from around the world. This new development, coupled with the increase of reported seismic activity and the appearance of what seems to be a Oh, 
in. Where's your car? His thin skin is the Earth's crust. Spinning liquid in the core is the engine which generates our protective magnetic field. Dr. Mayfield, we didn't bring you here for a geology class. The shift in the axis tilt caused slippage of the crust around the core. Consequently, the Earth is now out of alignment with its magnetic field, and the misaligned crust is causing increased seismic activity. Yes, yes, well, we're aware of all that. We just want to hear specific evidence pertaining to your far-fetched notion of a pole reversal. I assume you're aware of beached whales, birds migrating in the wrong direction, bees swarming? Yes, yes, creatures realigned with the magnetic field for navigation were confused, a short-lived result of the comet's temporary distortion of the magnetic field. Answer me this then, Dr. Elman. Why are polar auroras suddenly appearing in places they shouldn't? Again, temporary distortion of the magnetic field. Similar to what occurs when there's a bad solar storm. Hey, what are we talking about here, gentlemen? Aurora Borealis? Auroras normally occur when the Earth's poles attract solar particles. The fact that so many polar auroras are appearing elsewhere indicates that new magnetic poles are developing. I saw a polar aurora here last night. We are now sitting on a magnetic pole, which explains all the electromagnetic interference and the seismic activity we've been having. Dr. Mayfield, many strange anomalies have occurred in modern times without catastrophic consequence. These um, fields are like um, rubber bands. They bend and stretch and thin, but inevitably, they always return to their original state. Only this time, Dr. Elman, the rubber band has snapped. Mr. President, Many poles indicate a geomagnetic reversal has started. As the north and south poles disintegrate, the magnetic field they support will collapse. Static discharges will create electromagnetic shock waves, which will fry everything electronic. We will be thrown back into the Stone Age. The north and south poles will disappear, re-emerging at opposite ends of the globe, by which point our protective magnetic shield will be completely gone, exposing us to cosmic rays, which will incinerate the planet, just like what happened on Mars. Dr. Mayfield, must we be so melodramatic? This is real science, Mr. President. This planet has seen many geomagnetic reversals, just not since we've been here. As a man of science, I'm sure you can appreciate the need for thoughtful, rational discussion. However, your melodrama and sensational media appearances gives one the impression that your intentions are perhaps more to do with self-promotion. I've had a long day, gentlemen. I'm signing off. What did you expect, James? You just told them the world was going to end. This is a global warming, Dad, where we can spend years dragging our feet and debating the facts. I'll find out soon enough. That's the same sound I heard just before the quake last night. Stop the car.
God. I've never seen anything like this. Save your data, everybody. Storm hazards. What just happened? Oh my god, James. It was a massive 40 kilohertz EM pulse surge. Unlike anything we've ever seen. 40 kilohertz? Yes. All the cities that were hit were blacked out. And not only that, most of the satellites in orbit got fried. What could possibly have created a surge like that? It's got to be connected to the polar auroras. Were the hits random? I don't know yet. We lost power during the spike, which was lucky for us, or else the EM surge would have fried everything. We're just getting our emergency generators going. We're pulling up data now. I'm seeing about two dozen points where 40 mile wide electromagnetic waves struck Earth. Overlay the locations of the mini poles on your screen and tell me what you see. Overlay locations of all detected mini poles. All the hit areas are where the mini poles are. And that's it. The solar particles attracted by the poles are building up massive electrostatic discharges. Bam! Your office has to tell all those hit areas to evacuate, including Lindenville. The discharges are going to get much stronger as the field fails. It's going to be hard to issue an alert with a, a global blackout, but we'll certainly do our best. Can you run a timeline projection on your mainframe? Give me a couple hours. It'll take a while to process the data. James? How do we stop this? I don't know that we can. We just had the first worldwide blackout in history. And you and none of your brain trust can explain why. What we know right now for certain is that the affected cities were struck by large electromagnetic shockwaves. Just as Dr. Mayfield had predicted. General Mayfield, have you been able to locate your son yet? Not yet, sir. He's in one of the blackout areas. Well, I want to speak with him as soon as he's located. Yes, Mr. President. So tell me, Dr. Elman, can you still say with a certainty that we're not experiencing pole reversal? I don't have an answer right now, sir. Well, are we going to see more of this? Give me the worst case scenario. Mr. President, until we've assembled our teams, I don't want to speculate on something that's not my area of expertise. Don't! Try to cover your ass with me, doctor. We've got power outages across the country. American lives are at risk. So tell me to the best of your ability, are we going to see more of this? I believe so, Mr. President. And I have no choice but to declare federal martial law. General Mayfield? Yes, sir. You'll supervise West Coast operations. Yes, Mr. President. We'll start setting up shelters in the affected areas. James, thank God. Did you find Shane? Yeah, he was at the park. I've been trying to call you. I know, cell phones are useless. Only landlines are working. Where is he? He's in the kitchen, but one of the kids he was with last night was killed in the earthquake. What's going on? There's no power, and I saw an EM wave in the sky. It's bad. We're gonna have to get out of Lindenville. Shane. Is the world falling apart? No, no. 
just going through a rough patch. I've packed for us both. I'm not going with you. What do you mean? I'm going back to the base. What? What are you talking about? Why? I have an idea, and I have to talk to the president. I don't want to, Sin. I just... I don't see that there's a choice. You know what? You're right. There is no choice, because your family comes first. No wonder Shane doesn't think you love him. Listen to me. This is not a drill. It's the real deal. The survival of the planet depends on actions taken in the next 24 hours, and those so-called government science advisors don't have a clue. I have to do this for us. Okay, we're here. Smack in the middle of a mini poles magnetic center, the most dangerous place to be right now. Everywhere inside this circle is gonna get bombarded by EM pulses and torn apart by seismic disturbances. I want you guys out of this circle as soon as possible. Go to this town here, Little Brook, and wait for me, okay? What are you talking about, Dad? You're coming, right? I can't. I have to go back to the base. And I don't believe it. You, you're abandoning us? That sucks. No, Shane, try to understand. There is a global crisis going on. You think I don't know that? I saw one of my classmates crushed to death in a car last night. I know, I know. I'm, I'm sorry. So you don't care if the same thing happens to us? Of course I do. That's why I have to fix this. You know what? We'll be okay. Leave me alone. Shane, come on. If an EM wave hits, turn the car off until it passes. The electronics won't be short-circuited as long as the power's off. If the power's on. You and the car will fry. How long will you be? A day. Maybe two. Be careful. Yeah. You too. Shane? No, 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 no. Take those earbuds off. Stay away from electronics. You will get electrocuted if an EM wave hits. I'm serious. It's dangerous. Get rid of it. I'll see you soon. Hey. I love you. Why are they telling everyone to go to the church? Didn't Dad say it's dangerous to stay in town? Shelter in the parish. We're going to Little Brook. Ma'am, we have orders to divert everyone to the Lindenville Parish. That's ridiculous. It's not even safe there. Yeah, please. Okay, just back it up. All right, let's go.
the car off. to evacuate everyone from the mini pole sites. Evacuate? We just started rounding up people for the shelters. No, 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 you can't do that. The plasma charges building up from the pole reversal are escaping through the mini poles. This whole area is gonna get hit worse and worse as the field fails. All right, I'll notify the soldiers, but communications have been spotty. What about the president? You still able to contact him? Yeah, the emergency hotline's holding up. Good, I've got a crazy idea. I need to access Storm Hazard's mainframe. Oh, follow me. Storm hazards. Pam, talk to me. I'm briefing the president in a few minutes. James, the computer projection, it's not good.
Inside this circle is the most dangerous place on the West Coast. We're here, the epicenter of the mini pole, creating the electromagnetic and seismic disturbances. We need to move all of these people outside the circle to here. Where did you get this information? My husband, Dr. James Mayfield, he's a government astrophysicist. He's briefing the president right now. I, I haven't heard anything about this. I mean, my orders are to keep everybody here. I know, but I'm telling you, it's not safe here. Lindenville has become the magnetic center of a mini pole. What is that mini pole? Track the next EM pulse. You have to shut the generator down. Shut it down? I don't think so. You're not listening to me. We're in danger here. Ma'am, federal martial law has been declared. I can't just move hundreds of people because you show me some map with a circle drawn on it. You know what? Call General Mayfield. He'll vouch for everything I just said. Storm Hazards Lab just ran this projection. This is what the magnetic field normally looks like. This is what it looks like now, punctured by many bolts. This is 12 hours out, 24 hours out, 48 hours out. Magnetic field at zero Gauss. Gentlemen, we have two days before our planet loses its protective shield and solar radiation burns us all to a crisp. Anyone here take issue with Dr. Mayfield's projections? No, sir. No, sir. All right, then. So who's got a game plan to stop this pole reversal? All right, this is the way I see it. What if we detonate a nuclear explosion of a magnitude equal to that with which the comet fragment hit Earth in the opposing hemisphere so that it pushes back with equal force? Are you crazy? How do we know it wouldn't make things worse? What about fallout? fallout the pole reversal completes in 48 hours and then it is bye bye planet does anybody else have a better idea that's what i thought that comet fragment hit us with the force of a hundred megaton bomb we don't have a warhead that powerful what's the most powerful nuke in the u.s arsenal we have a new 50 megaton prototype that's at the nuclear test site. Okay, well, we can formulate a dual detonation to equal 100. And? We can't get through to the general. Our communications are down. Well, we can't just leave these people here. This place is a ticking time bomb. I suggest you find a cot and you chill. Yeah? Zoe. Hey, when did you get here? Just a few minutes ago. Excuse me, everybody. Can I have your attention, please? Hi, I'm Cynthia Mayfield, um, science teacher at Lindenville High. Many of you know that my husband, Dr. James Mayfield, is a respected astrophysicist. He's told me that our town is the epicenter of the electromagnetic and seismic disturbances happening on the West Coast, and that it's very dangerous to stay here. But we need to move outside the circle. The nearest safe town is Little Brook. You want to step down from there, ma'am? How come the soldiers don't know this? Because their communications are down. They're completely in the dark. I'm not going to ask you again, ma'am. Please listen to me. We could all die here. Get her off of there. If you open your mouth about this to anyone again, you will be arrested. Is that clear? Yes. And I don't want to see that map again. Release her.
James should be happy to know that the bomber is on its way. And two 50 megaton warheads will launch at 1600 hours. Yes. What do you mean we lost the plane? Yes, thank you. An EM pulse took out the bomber. The warheads exploded in midair. They have to try again. Send another plane. James, the skies are unflyable. We'll lose them all. No, they have to try. Send 20 planes. One might get through. James, James, you have to think of something else. Fast. There's got to be another way. We've got to get out of here. Look, why would the soldiers keep us here if it isn't safe? Because they don't know anything. They're just following their last orders. Communications have gotten so bad, they can't even contact their superiors. What do you want to do? Dr. Mayfield was right when he said the comet might hit Earth. I think we should go. We're in. plan that just might work. We're going to detonate at the bottom of the ocean, the Mariana Trench, the deepest point in the Earth's crust. Dr. Allman? Yes, the ocean crust is thin enough that the blast could go right through to the lithosphere, and yes, it could conceivably push the planet back into alignment. The Mariana Trench is over 36,000 feet deep, Doctor. How do you plan on getting there? Submarine. Unfortunately, Doctor, we don't have any that are operational. What do you mean you don't have any that are operational? EM interference crippled the onboard computers that control the nuclear reactors. Are you telling me there's not a single sub out there? That's right. That's not exactly true, General. The Russians have an old diesel screw they still train on. Isn't pretty, but she's running. She's on the West Coast for an international training exercise. Open that bunker. Church. I can hear it. Hear what? An EM pulse tone. What's an EM pulse tone? Electromagnetic shockwave. It's a burst of electromagnetic energy coming from the mini pool. That sub should be in the harbor by now. What the heck is that noise? A pulse tone. Get the engine down. Now. Yeah, stop the car right now.
the car off, Michael. Turn it off! Everything electric has to be turned off. Your cell phones, MP3 players, everything. Get rid of your watch, Michael. Those guys remember it got their engine. Michael, what's wrong? Dad? Are you okay? Can you drive? Sure. Ah. James! Check the engine. We've got no time to waste. Battery and a starter are fried. It looks like we're maybe an hour away from getting out of the circle. We need to get my father to a hospital. What's wrong? He has a pacemaker. I think the storm shorted it out. It is an honor, General Mayfield. Captain Yolenkov, this is Dr. James Mayfield. Captain. I see the resemblance. There are two warheads in the back of that truck. Suda. So, we've worked together to save world, no? Yes. Dr. Mayfield will formulate the detonation sequence. My ship, uh, she's strong as ox, but she's not so fast, you know. Yes. We know. Look, the closest town is in Clarksville. We passed it a few minutes ago. Maybe they have a hospital. No, no, don't go back. I, I'm, I'm okay. Just get out of the circle.
Get out or I'll blow your head off. Okay, okay, okay. Everyone get out or I'll kill all of you. Please, my father's having a heart attack. We have to get him to a hospital. Get out or I'll put him out of his misery. Take it easy. We're going. What are conditions in the Mariana Trench? Expect seismic activity like nothing you've ever seen. You should warn your crew that the steam vents will be heating up the ocean, causing violent current shifts. Huh. All this from rock hitting Earth? Well, technically the comet fragment was made of ice, but yes. So tell me, Dr. Mayfield, you plan to detonate these bombs at one time? No, not exactly. In order to get a 100 megaton explosion, I need to formulate a detonation sequence just milliseconds apart. You know, of course, that uh, this vessel cannot outrun such a shockwave. We know. Your crew, Captain, do they know? They have volunteered for this mission in order to save their lives. Shockwave is the least of our worries. Chain. You know you can't start a car without the battery. Cars in the old days didn't have batteries. They used to be started by hand cranks. Yeah, well, we don't have a hand crank, and this is a modern car. You don't need a battery to drive either. All we need to do is capture an electrical charge that will help ignite the spark plugs. event that hasn't happened on the scale in millions of years. What creates such hell? Massive tectonic movements. How will this affect the mission? Well, it makes it nearly impossible.
что-то по оброждению. Shane really do what he says he's doing? All I know is Shane loves working with cars. He's the biggest greaser at our school. Better hurry up with that chain. meters from bottom, almost in position. Stay here as long as it takes. If we die from a crushed hull or shockwave, the difference is a big. If we fail, the whole world dies. This is it. We're on. Okay, I, I, I've got to set the timers on the warheads. I forget you, Doctor Mayfield, but don't do a stop day. I feel happy to die knowing it was to save family on the surface. But I am sad that you must die with your son. Until a few days ago, I hadn't seen James in five years. So I hope. Bomber 
одну сторону. Максимальная скорость. Это будет невозможно отрывать шок в один Но я не могу пытаться. I think it's done. We just have to pray that one static charge has been trapped in the cylinder. Come on, baby. Uh, yeah! You're a genius! up out of the shockwave's path. The hull is not designed for such temperatures. What have you got to lose? Port! Treated graduates off! Thanks to unprecedented cooperation between nations, we have survived the most catastrophic event to ever threaten our existence. The Earth has been healed. The human spirit has triumphed. But we will honor those lost with our resolve to rebuild. And we will rejoice in what we've been given. A chance for a new beginning. 10 a.m. Perfect time. And finally, our fragile planet owes a huge debt to Dr. James Mayfield. 